What's going on you guys? My name is Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns, 5 Scariest Disappearances of 2018. Number 5 Police in Colorado released the last known footage of a mother who was seen at a Safeway just before going missing. According to police, the young mother dropped her daughter off with her father and was reported missing 10 days later by her own mother. The woman's fiancé was almost immediately believed to have been involved, as he'd never reported her missing or even contacted police. Investigators soon found out that the fiancé had been texting the woman up to three days after she went missing. Police searched the family's home and found that all of her personal belongings remained, including her car keys. Her cell phone was soon found about 600 miles away in Idaho. To this day, the woman's body has never been found, though police have begun to pursue the case as a murder investigation. One of the last videos of missing Kelsey Barron. Here she is inside a Safeway supermarket on Thanksgiving Day holding her one-year-old daughter, Kaylee. The 29-year-old from Colorado hasn't been seen or heard from since. Kelsey, we just want you home. Kelsey, if you can. Kelsey's mom pleads for her safe return home. It's been nearly three weeks since they've last spoken. Detectives say the flying instructor's cell phone was tracked near Gooding, Idaho, about 700 miles away. She's not the kind that runs off. This is completely out of character. Kelsey loves her God, she loves her family and friends, and she loves her job. Neighbor Darlene Vera. We're hoping that she's safe and uh, healthy, and if she would just reach out to someone. While Kelsey was last seen on camera with her baby, the child is home safe with her husband. Number four. Investigators say that a man from Fayetteville was beaten to death and placed in a dog cage, though his body has yet to be found. The victim, Charles Fuentes, was last seen leaving a sports bar in March of 2018. Security camera footage shows the man leaving with two other men, aged 42 and 23. One of these men was shot and killed outside of an apartment complex a short while later. A witness reported seeing the youngest of the two men beating Charles, and the man was eventually charged with Charles' murder. Police remain hopeful for finding Charles' body, but admit that it's quite unlikely that they ever will. I want to know where my son is at. We are going to find him sooner or later. Investigators have not found the body of Charles Fuentes. The man now charged with first-degree murder in the death of a missing Fayetteville man stood in front of a judge this afternoon. WRAL's Gilbert Bays was in that courtroom and joins us now live outside police headquarters. Gilbert. Catherine, Orion Chavis may have been charged with first-degree murder in the death of Anthony Fuentes, but this investigation is far from over. That's because investigators from the Fayetteville Police Department and the district attorney say they are working hard to find Fuentes' body, and that's exactly what the family wants. 23-year-old Ryan Chavis showed no emotion as District Court Judge Cherry Tyler Mack read the new charges against him. First-degree murder, kidnapping, and conspiracy to commit first-degree kidnapping. The victim's mother and family members say they saw no remorse as Chavis stood before the judge. I think he was heartless, that he has no conscience. I think he's evil. And even his attitude towards not even looking at us. Fuentes was last seen March 3rd outside Izzy Sports Bar getting into a car with Chavis and Mark Van Hassel. Van Hassel was murdered last year in South Carolina. District Attorney Billy West says his death was unrelated to the Fuentes case, but he too would have been charged with beating Fuentes to death and putting his body in a dog's cage. Our allegation is, is that he was involved in that, that beating uh, and putting uh, the victim, in this case, Mr. Fuentes, in a cage along with his, his co-defendant. So, uh, we felt like there's enough evidence to, to issue those charges now. Nobody deserved that. That's unreal to happen in this town or any town. Fuentes' body has yet to be found. Investigators are hopeful Chavis or the public will provide information that leads them to the remains. Meanwhile, the family continues to pray in search of closure. There's always people praying with us, and we all pray for a common thing. We want Anthony back. Now, Chavis remains locked up without bond at the Cumberland County Detention Center. His next court appearance will be January 24th. And Catherine, if he's convicted on that first-degree murder charge, he could face the death penalty. Gilbert Bay's live in Fayetteville tonight. Gilbert, thank you. Number three. 
Police are searching for the missing body of a young woman from the Grafton area. Police say that they found a series of crates which they believe to be tied to the case, but still have no signs of Trish Hayes, who disappeared in July. She's described as being 5 feet 6 inches tall with brown hair. The Attorney General is handling the details of the investigation, but details regarding the crates have yet to be released. Investigators continuing to look for 26-year-old Trish Haynes. They're working at least three different scenes. State police, including a canine unit and the major crime unit truck, back at 225 Main Street, a property they searched earlier in the week and continue to section off with crime scene tape. Close to that residence off Main Street, the state police car sits outside of 91 French Hill Road, a heavily wooded area where a trailer sits on a dirt lot. Investigators say they're also using a helicopter to search Warner, New Hampshire, where Ashley Smith, a childhood friend of Haynes, says they went to school together. Smith was staying at the Main Street location in Grafton when police arrived and says she hasn't seen Haynes in weeks. It's been a while. It's been at least, I'd have to say probably July or so, June. I'm not good with dates. Court paperwork shows Haynes had a contentious relationship with a man in 2016 and 2017, pleading guilty to a domestic violence charge, as well as filing a restraining order against that man. Number two. Police have surveillance footage of a missing man from Staten Island, who police believe to be the victim of a homicide. He was last seen on December 20th entering a barber shop. In the footage, the man is seen greeting another gentleman and chatting with him for quite some time, though they don't leave the barber shop together. Police are searching for this man so that they can question him regarding the case, though they have no evidence or real reason to believe why he may have been involved in the homicide. Number 1 In March of 2018, a woman by the name of Rita Garcia was reported missing by her three sons after she failed to return home. Due to a significant lack of evidence in the case, her family has turned to handing out flyers and bracelets with Rita's name and information on them to help bring awareness to her disappearance. Police say a man named Juan is the prime suspect in the case, and he's being held in custody on a $1 million bond for an unrelated crime. Rita's family as well as police remain hopeful that if Juan is involved in the case, he'll eventually come it has clean. It's been nearly five months since a mother from Longmont disappeared. Police have a suspect in the case, but are no closer to finding out what happened to 34-year-old Rita Gutierrez Garcia. Her family is desperate for closure. The community is standing behind them. Our Jamie Leary joined them in Boulder County, where the search for answers is still going strong. The overcast weather may have kept some people away from the Boulder County Fair today, but for one family, they were on a mission to get as much exposure as possible for missing Longmont mother, Rita Gutierrez Garcia. Hi, just passing out some flyers for my sister. Her name's Rita Gutierrez. Armed with bracelets. It says justice for Rita. T-shirts and flyers. It's been five months now, going on five months. Rita's family hoped that fairgoers would be understanding of their mission. I just know there's a lot of families here, a lot of families who love each other as much as we love Rita. Her sister Jessica was right. Thank you. People were more than understanding. Love to you. Oh, thank you. In fact, nearly five months later, many in the community are still paying attention. We all want the guy caught, and if it were my daughter, I wouldn't rest. And a lot of us here in Longmont feel the same way, that you ought to be safe in the street. We're trying to stay positive. Rita's youngest, ages 9 and 13, have also been relentless in the search for their mom. Um, I'm doing fine. It's just like, like sometimes it'll seem like fine, but then other times like I'll just be like 
confused and not know what to think. And with no trace of Rita, the entire family continues to spread her story to anyone who will listen. We want to pass out flyers and show everyone how we're looking and how we won't stop. She's been missing since March. Yeah, I heard about that. Juan Jose Figueroa Jr. is a suspect in Rita's disappearance. He's currently in custody facing charges for a separate rape case. We're going to have justice not only for ourselves, but for the other victims also. The suspect is still in custody on a $1 million bond. If you're interested in helping Rita's family in the search for her, you can find more information online at cbsdenver.com. In Longmont, Jamie Leary covering Colorado First. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.